Hello there. Uh, this video is going to be really different, and it's kind of a hybrid between an office vlog and an update on my VGA capture adventures, because uh, today I'm going to be doing wiring in the office. So I've actually already done uh, one run here. This is um, Ethernet, kind of, that's going through the wall, through the ceiling, and over to the area where I've been doing VGA capture. And uh, I did that one in a stream yesterday, and it took me uh, a lot of time to do live, so I'm looking forward to having time off camera, sort of, at least with cameras rolling in the background, uh, to do the rest of these because I have a bunch of them I need to do. Uh, and it actually became time critical that I get these done because I'm going to be replacing the desks that I didn't really like too much uh, in this corner with the desk. And uh, I'm going to be picking that up tomorrow, actually, but I'm recording this on July 4th and where it is is close, so I can't go get it right now. So uh, what that actually means though is I have a little bit of time here to actually get the network runs done that I've been putting off since I moved in. I've been dragging my feet on this because uh, I didn't know how this corner was going to get set up and I always had the opportunity to come back and do it again, so I've just been not worrying about it. And the most permanent solution is a temporary one that works and I've had an okay solution so far. but. Now I need to actually get serious about this and I'm really looking forward to it because it means I'm going to be able to record computer videos again a little more easily, which I really haven't had the ability to have them set up and be happy with. So uh, yeah, looking forward to all of that changing with this project and uh, yeah, I'm quite excited to see how this is gonna turn out. Okay, so I just wanna get started on this right away and the very first thing we're gonna have to do is get cable into the wall and through the ceiling. Now, doing this is a lot easier when there's no drywall, but thankfully I have a drop ceiling and the tops of the walls are kind of exposed in there. Uh, this unfortunately has a two by four that's run along the top, but there is a piece of conduit that's run down here but that means that the cable has to be jammed down in there and it's tight and there's other cables run and I'm not actually removing the existing cables because I'm gonna put them back when I leave and take my cables back out because that's actually not that hard to get them in and out. So I'm just gonna do that so I can take them with me wherever I go. But uh, I need to run the cable. So uh, I have a spool of Cat6 here and to do this, I'm just gonna pull out a bunch. I've already run this so I have a rough idea of how much it should take. Okay, so I can see that this section is labeled 242 feet, and that means that I put in 54 feet of cable, which is uh, gonna chew through this pretty quick, but uh, there's enough here that I can do that, so uh, I'm not too worried. But uh, yeah, now that I have that, I know that I can actually just pull out more uh, cable of about that length. So I'm actually just gonna take this out to uh, 290, uh, or no, 190, and give myself about uh, 52 feet. That should be good, so let me do that. All right, 192 right there, that should be good. So all I'm gonna do uh, for this now is just set the box on top of the cable here and that will mostly hold it down. So to do this first run, this actually gets a little uh, weird and annoying because I have to run the cable down into here so that I can pull it out. But none of that is actually very easy. So I have this weird loop that's gonna be almost invisible on this white wall. And honestly, this is part of why I'm so excited to get the new desk is that I hate the white wall with the white desk or the white computers. It is a, not a good look. So a uh, new desk, well, you're gonna see in this video, it's great. Um, but uh, this thing will actually go through the conduit and then I can pull it up. It's uh, some kind of fiberglass rod thing and it's somewhat flexible and it's actually made up of a bunch of individual segments that are all screwed together so that you can customize the length and they all store in this plastic tube when you're not using it. It's pretty slick. So what I'm gonna do here first is go up here and run this down the conduit. All right, now what you really can't see here is that there is just a steel pipe poking up out of the two by four and all I'm gonna do is just uh, jam this down in there. And that's the end. Now unfortunately, um, I can only access this from the other side of this wall. Now in this instance, that's not a problem. I have the other side of this wall available to me. The IBM 5150 though, I don't have that area available. 
So I might have to come up with something a little different or uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not weird like this is. But uh, I'll bring a camera on to the other side and show you what's going on over here because uh, it's kind of annoying and unfortunate. Now this area is not well lit, so forgive the yellow lighting, but uh, this right here is where the cable actually comes out. And if I pull on this here, there we go. There is my uh, rod. Now the thing is, is that the actual network connections are about right there on the other side. So there is this distance that is really too long for me to be able to reach. If there's something like that next to the 5150, then I'm gonna have to get creative and maybe come up with some kind of lasso or maybe one of those like uh, garage finger clipper things that's on a wire. I don't know, I'll take a look at it when we get there. But uh, for right now I can do this and I've already done this once so I know I can feed the wire over to this side by hand and then actually get enough of it through that I can grab it, so I'll be good. But I don't have access to this on the other side of that, so I'm a little concerned. But for now, what I can do is take this weird thing and the end of the piece of wire that I took out, and I can actually screw this on here, which is really handy. And then on this, I need to put this through, fold it over, and then this will go over and hold the wire in place. And that should do it. I can now actually pull that up and through, but for a little insurance, I'm gonna take a twist tie here and just wrap it around that just in case it starts to get any ideas. That should help uh, keep it together as I pull it through. Now I'm gonna feed the first uh, bit here by hand uh, so that I know it won't catch, but now, I can go back to the other side and just pull on it. I'm gonna leave this camera here. And then on this side, I'm gonna pull the rod up and it will start to take the cable up and into the conduit. There we are, I have it. Now, actually, I really should uh, go ahead and pull it all the way through, but I am not done with the uh, rod yet. So I'm gonna leave that there, but I'm gonna pull the rest of the cable through. And there we go, that's all that fed through. Now the next step is actually going to be getting it across the ceiling, which I'm going to again use this for, and I'm gonna just take the end that doesn't have the cable, and I'm just gonna kinda jam it through there. Now I have on me, no, I put it down somewhere, a light that I will use to see this. But you know what I can do? I can just take my phone and use that while recording some video here so you can see what I'm doing. So here is the tip of the rod that I need to feed through this. And if we look way off into the distance, you can see some light in the corner there because I've already removed one of the ceiling tiles to run a cable down from. So the goal is to get the rod, come on camera, uh, over to there. So I'm going to feed it through the ceiling until I get it there. All right, I've got the line rod pretty far over there. So I'm gonna put some cable up there, pull it around so it won't fall down. But now I can go to the other side and look for it. Well, I thought that was gonna take a lot more work, but I can just see it right there. So I can grab it and just start pulling it through. And there we are, cable run. Now, a quick note here. Um, I was gonna try and run all these through this wall, but I'm gonna have a bunch of cables going through here and one wall panel isn't gonna be enough for all of them. And additionally, I found out that's a brick wall right there, so I can't run any like new stuff because um, I'm not drilling a brick wall all the way through it. It's probably not possible. There might actually be channels running the outside of the building for what is here, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to, I, I, well, I first off picked this really thin section of the drop ceiling tile where there was previously a wall and they kind of just covered it up by putting little tiny thin ones. But uh, with that, I can actually either just pull this over slightly and leave a tiny bit exposed there or cut it and do something and then have a cable runner guard that'll go over them all along the wall and then I don't have to worry about it. So this is uh, the best worst solution that I have for this. Back to this side though, now we need to get the cable through there because it goes to the other side of the wall still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna trim it uh, pretty much anywhere will probably be fine. So let's just go ahead and do it say there. And now we have the bit that we need to run through there. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back over 
to this side, and then I can feel the hole in the conduit here. Uh, there it is. I'm gonna just push a bunch of the cable through, leave enough on this side that I can still pull it back out if I need, but I'm hoping that I will see it on the other side. So coming back over here, I can see a new bit right there, and bingo! We have the cable, pull that out, and my, and that's it right there. So how much did I end up with? Uh, a little probably more than I needed. Um, I can potentially pull some up through there if I feel like it, but having some extra on this side is a good idea. So we're now at the point where we can make ends. Now, the goal here isn't to have a cable that we can plug into something. It is to have a cable that we can plug another cable into so that we can vary the length on this side of the wall to whatever we need. Now, in this instance, it's probably gonna be pretty short because I'm just gonna go to a VGA transmitter thing, but uh, for the network ones, which are gonna be routed the same exact way, uh, I'm probably gonna go to a switch on this side to connect all the different computers that I'll have, rather, since I'm only gonna have the two ports over here. So it's going to need to be a different length depending on where I put that. So uh, what we're going to be ending these with are called keystones. Now, these have uh, different little sections that you're going to crimp the wires into, and that ends up looking like this when it's done. This is one of the original ones that was run. I have the caps on mine already. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to take back the sheathing and then run the wires to the respective areas where the colors line up, and then you will have a viable jack. So this is actually going to be done by putting this keystone into this little holder so that it's a lot easier to handle with your giant human hands. And then to fit in the actual wires, I have this punch down tool, and uh, this goes over and then has a cutting action that will actually make it so that the wires are trimmed and they look really nice and tidy. I was sent and recommended all of these things by people and I'm extremely appreciative because after having run one of these fully now, I know how much of a difference it makes to make uh, all this go by a lot easier and quicker. So I am really appreciative of it because this setup works really well. This has uh, all been really awesome. But let's go ahead and get started on this. And there we are. That is the cable installed. Now to go do the other side. But with that done, we can put the covers on. And now we can test the cable. I actually forgot to bring my cable tester home today after wishing I had it yesterday. Because <sighs> I just moved the server at home. Awesome. All right, we're going to test it uh, by actually just using it. <laughs> All right, now, before we run a signal through there and I lose you on how it's working, I should probably give you a crash course on my VGA capture setup because it has changed dramatically uh, since my last video on it, and it's still an evolving setup because of how complicated all this is. You're not going to see every aspect of this because that's not what this video is about, but I'm gonna be able to show you enough here that you're gonna understand at least what's going on. So uh, that's my main goal here, is just so that you understand why I'm doing the routing and cable stuff that I am. So first off, this is a dedicated VGA capture computer that I have built. Um, I have it in a rack mount case because at first I thought I was going to be putting this uh, into a rack near my uh, vintage computer systems and then I thought I was going to rack mount it with the uh, video capture equipment that I have and that didn't end up working out. So it just kind of is in this but it's not really going to be used like that. Uh, mostly it doesn't fit in the racks because it's too deep. But in this system, there is an i5 Haswell 4670K uh, processor. There is a GTX 970, because it doesn't really need a whole lot to do VGA capture. Uh, but the main crux at the heart of it is a Datapath Vision RGB E1S. Now, this is a capture card that is aimed at really high-end applications, and it was very expensive when it first came out. Now you can get them at a somewhat cheaper price, but uh, you're gonna run into some problems. Like, a lot of them uh, have low-profile brackets, so I actually cut up a bracket to make a custom one to fit it on there, which didn't really work out that well. Um, but then they actually have a critical issue that is well known, and uh, despite being a VGA capture device, uh, the one resolution that they actually have a problem with is 
VGA 640 by 480. Now the problem here is that it offsets the image slightly when you capture 640 by 480 and you can either just ignore that or maybe buy some really expensive equipment to try and fix it by repositioning the image. I, however, built my own little V-Sync delay box here that modifies the video signal. <laughs> um, and I have a whole thread on Twitter about how I discovered what the problem was and implementing the solution and all that stuff. And this is something it's one of the many things that has really drug out this project in VGA capture and making it a whole nightmare. So uh, I don't really want to get into it here. Just know the data path card, I had to use this to make it work. And I had to make this thing because other solutions were too expensive. That's not really that difficult to make. No, I don't have open source designs or anything like that. I'm not even sure that I still have the uh, Arduino script that I wrote for that thing anywhere. That's a little disappointing now that I think about that. But that's part of why this video is taking so long to really dive into VGA capture because it's a whole thing. Now, just to field two questions here that I know I will get, an Avermedia C127 or Live Broadcaster HD and an Epifan DVI to PCIe. Both of these are also VGA capture cards, but let's just throw away the Avermedia because it sucks uh, for lots and lots of reasons, lots of them. The Epifan DVI to PCIe is another VGA capture device that's in a very similar device class as the Datapath card. The only reason that I don't consider using this personally is because I'm running Linux on this computer and the Linux drivers for this card are extremely lacking and it doesn't do well in here. So that is the main reason. Also, this card doesn't really work. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of makes it so I have to use the Datapath as well. But that's why. I could use a card like this, and I know there are also solutions for converting VGA to HDMI, not what I'm interested in. Um, this allows me to properly tune the video signal stuff, as we'll see in a moment here when I get this set up. So, that's the hardware. Now let me get my test bench connected to this so you can see it in action with a local capture. Okay, so I have the test bench running, and I have it being displayed on this Dell monitor. Now the thing is, is uh, I can easily plug this into the VGA capture computer and now it will show up there and be working. That part's not a problem. Uh, we then have the issue though that I can't see it on an actual display near the computer. So the solution to that is actually what that V-Sync delay box <laughs> originally was, a VGA splitter. Now. I have a better solution than this, and this is what led me to wanting to do the complicated VGA stuff that I'm working on right now. This is an Extron VGA matrix switcher. Now, if we get a good look at the back of this thing, we have eight inputs and six outputs for different VGA sources on here. And what this means is when you have different inputs and outputs connected, you can use the buttons on the front panel to tell it to send this input to this output and cross route different signals to different locations. Now this has actually been really helpful uh, with that stupid VSync box that I had to build because I can take the video signal input onto one of them, have it output to the monitor connected to this thing, and then have it also output to the VSync delay box, which can then either be connected directly to the data path card or can be connected back into an input on the Extron and then routed back out to the uh, data path card. So it allows me to have multiple different options. So that is the basic idea. Let's go ahead and get this set up here so that I can show you how that works. So I'm going to take the video capture card and have it be output two. And then I'm going to take the monitor and have it be output one. And then I can take an additional cable and plug it into input one and have that go to the computer. All right, now I can come over to the front of the unit, tell it to take input one and to route it to outputs one and two, hit enter, and now we have local video and VGA capture. So this has been a pretty powerful device, but it can get more powerful through the use of those VGA repeaters. Now, these are the units that I've been mentioning that are so critically useful. These take in VGA and output over RJ45 network cable. Now, this is really weird sounding, but there are multiple reasons that you would actually want to do this. 
the length limit for a VGA cable is about 50 feet, and I actually have a 50 foot VGA cable. It really sucks. I've tried to use that for connecting my uh, video capture equipment. It is not acceptable. So these actually allow you to extend the length of it quite a bit longer without losing signal quality. So that's a big benefit. But another one is, is that you can run it through normal jacks in the walls. So that's why I want this. But to just quickly demonstrate how this works, uh, I'm going to take a short patch cable I made, connect the output from this one, and connect it to the input on this one. Then I can take the signal coming from the test bench computer, plug it into the input here, and then plug it into the output from the other one, and then plug it back into our input going into the Extron. And with it all connected, bingo, video capture and display over a network cable. How weird and cool is that? Now, I've done some testing. There really isn't a significant quality difference at all. Like, I really I can't tell. The only thing that I can tell when there is a difference is that you can have this signal booster come on that causes these weird lines to show up on the display. Uh, but as long as you don't do that when you're running even short distances, like 50 feet, uh, then it works just fine. So that is what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and take the transmitter and go ahead and move it all the way over to the other side of this room and connect it to the Windows XP gaming computer that I built in a recent video and see that get transmitted over here. Okay, I have the computer on here and I have one of the network VGA things connected back there. It's thankfully also a local splitter, so the monitor that is connected to the computer can still get the video signal, but that, splitter uh, network cable thing. They're really weird. It's hard to describe them. The VGA network transmitter <laughs> is connected to this cable, which I can now come grab one of the ones that I have running through the wall and plug it in like that. All right, now back over here, I have the other end of that cable and I'm going to unplug the transmitter from the test bench computer here. And I'm gonna plug in this system uh, from the Windows XP computer over here and we'll see how that goes. Now, I, this might not sync correctly, but this will show up, but there we go. Windows XP being captured over the entire 30 foot length of the office through about 50 feet of cable. It looks really good when the settings are perfectly dialed in. So I'm quite happy with this. Next, let's go ahead and test the other cable that I just ran today, because this is the one that I ran yesterday that I already knew worked. So I'll unplug this end over here, plug it back in, Coming back over to this side, I will pick up the new cable that I ran, unplug this end, plug it in here, and I can see it's already popped up. That is just so ridiculously convenient. I can't believe it. So I now have two VGA capture cables run from the other side of the office that I can simultaneously send over here. Um, if I put the Epifan back into the VGA capture computer, I could theoretically record two sources at once, but I'm actually trying to get my hands on a data path RGB vision E2S, which has two inputs on it as a data path card. So eventually I'll end up with one of those um, and then I can do that, which I would like to be able to do side by side stuff. So that might be handy at some point, but that is uh, the VGA network cabling working perfectly. I'm super happy with that. I think that's a pretty good confirmation that cable's good. I'll do actual network tests later to confirm and bring my cable tester through to make sure all the ends are good, but I can adjust the ends later since the keystones will pop out of whatever I'll put them in. So I'm not worried about that right now. It's past the basic test. Next though, I need to actually get the network ethernet, internet kind of uh, cables done that'll have the black keystones on them that I'll be using the red cable for. So I'm gonna get started on that and we're just gonna kind of montage through that because I need to really pick up the paste here. We've demonstrated that it works and seen how it'll be used. So let's just get it done and over with now.
I can finally call this outlet done. Um, ran the other two red cables for ethernet. Um, got them all ended, terminated. Um, I just did tests of both getting DHCP and then actual speed tests of the cables because I don't have my cable tester here. They were all over 100 megabits per second. They were getting my full download speed through the internet. So that's good. Um, I'm now ready to call these done. So uh, let's go ahead and get this put together here in the wall, which I am really looking forward to. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just cram in the original cables here that are not mine. Um, and I have them tied together and then taped to the uh, outlet cover thing. So, oh, you know what's fun? I didn't run all my cables through the outlet cover. So let's go ahead and do that first. Here we are, that should be good. Now, I'm gonna take my cables, I'm gonna pull them so they're all roughly together. And I'm gonna shove some of the extra in there to start, but then I have to put them in the panel still. I have the four connector plate cover. I'm gonna put ethernets at the top. These are labeled, so this is E1, and that's going right there. E2, excellent. V1 and V2. Boom, there's my plate. Oh, that's that's so fancy. All right, let's get that screwed back in. That is fancy. Wow, that's super cool. Okay, let's go take a look at the other end. Okay, here is where this is really gonna all come together. Um, so I have a wall mountable uh, chassis for rack mount units, so that kind of stuff. And the uh, Xtron will be going in here, which is gonna be super fancy. Um, and then this is a Keystone patch panel, so the cables, uh, these can actually go in from the back and be accessible that way. So this one's V2, so it'll go something like that. So we're gonna be putting those in, but there's a couple of things that we have to keep in mind um, and plan for this. So these actually need to go through the rear. That's how those are gonna be routed. So those can be there, but now I have to figure out how to put this on. So we're gonna put this panel all the way at the top here. So I'm gonna to wanna to put these on spaces one and three. That's done. And that is, uh, that's on there. This is V2, and that one is labeled two. So this will go here. This one is V1, we'll go here. All right, boom. All right, there's that. So that's how those look when they go in, cables are held there, it comes straight back out and that goes off to the wall. So, uh, the next thing is getting the remote units in here. Now, these actually came with these like weird mounting plates and I don't think they go to them, but they actually kind of line up in a way where I, I think it could be used to rack mount these. <laughs> yeah, that is oddly not awful. And then I think I can just put it on kind of like that. Bingo. All right, and then I will just have a short cable like this to make that route, and even that one's kind of long for that, but then I don't have to have like super long network cables on this end, and that's really how you're supposed to do it. Now, something I didn't really mention is uh, these can do audio, which is pretty sweet, and the cable, or the units themselves, came with these cables that have both uh, video and audio connectors on them but the cables themselves are also kind of short, so they're perfect for being used inside of a rack like this. Now, unfortunately, I actually can't use the audio connectors because the uh, Xtron down here does not use TRS. The audio goes in through a Phoenix terminal like this, so I've actually made a couple of these already. Um, and, oh, that's right, that's not attached yet. Uh, we'll go ahead and wait and get that attached in a little bit here. Uh, but then I'm gonna go ahead and designate the top one as input one. So one to top, okay. Uh, but then I can use the short cable here and go from there 
down to the Extron as well. And I won't have to deal with a bunch of really long cables. So nice and short, really simple. That's how that all is going to work. Um, and now I have a self-contained unit. I can just run one VGA cable out of the back here and then everything else will be uh, integrated into this for all of the VGA switching and everything. I'm gonna have uh, this whole rack next to or on top of or under or whatever, the actual VGA capture computer. Um, like I said before, I wanted to have the capture system in this rack, but you can see it's actually identical in length. So that won't work. <laughs> um, but they can be near each other or maybe I could find some like extension bars to bring this up. I'm not sure how that works as a thing, but it might be possible, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, gonna be like one big stack of awesome VGA stuff. I'm gonna fiddle around some more with this, get some, uh, an another, actually, I think I'm gonna make two patch cables, that one's a little long, so make shorter patch cables. Uh, get some of the other units in here and mounted, and then uh, add some VGA cables, and I need to make the other audio cables that I need. Uh, I think I only have, uh, four of these, and I don't remember if I have three or four of those units. I may have only exactly enough. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I think I might have three of these, so I might have just enough. Um, but yeah, uh, this is looking pretty good. Just need to uh, put in a little more time. And then I don't think I'm gonna have time to do the IBM 5150 area before I go and get the desk tomorrow, but this has worked out really well for today, so I am quite happy with this. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm probably, well, I'm gonna work on this a little more. I'll check in with you tomorrow uh, after I get the desk. The desk is now in my van and uh, I'm pretty exhausted because I'm trying to clear space in the corner where it's gonna go. And uh, this wall might be, this open space, I should say, might actually be one inch too short to fit it. So. We're gonna see what happens, and I might actually have to cut out a little bit of it. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be kind of interesting. While I figure that out, I'm not gonna roll the cameras because that's gonna take a lot of work, move stuff around and figure it out. So I've already been moving all of this this morning, which has been a huge pain. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you in a moment when uh, I know what the answer is gonna be there. That close. <laughs> this is... Uh, the side piece for there, that's the top, that piece would come up and down, and that's the bottom side. Um, yeah, it just, just barely does not fit with those shelves along that wall. So, um, now to figure out how I want to handle that. Um, it would be easier to cut that small shelf than it would that. The immediate solution, though, is going to be just to pull out the small shelf. That'll work for now. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that, I think. So, um, but yeah, this is going to be good. I got the other piece of that that goes right here to bring in still. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And oh man, it is brutal out. It is so hot, and this is a lot of heavy work. <laughs> and upstairs is really not very fun. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna get the last one in and then try and figure this out. The space in here has just completely disappeared in the uh, bringing in of this desk. As you can see, um, it's quite a substantial desk. <laughs> so it's gonna be very impressive once it's all together. But uh, yeah, I gotta get going on that still. All right, bad audio for a moment uh, because I'm just gonna put the desk together here and I'm just gonna let the cameras roll during that. So uh, we got one and two cameras, hopefully get you some nice footage of this. So uh, yeah, let's get going.
good hard test here yeah that's good um whew, this thing's amazing <laughs> um this is exactly what i was looking for in a desk uh the only thing that it could have been better is a less colorful wood but this exact kind of real wood laminate shelving type thing but space underneath um totally what i wanted for this area so i'm really excited about this it is not very well put together though and i think i know why i think um these were uh two units that were just meant to be standalone hutch type desk things and then there was a corner piece available to put them together this is uh, i don't know if you can see it from there um missing laminate but the thing is is it's it's not missing laminate it was cut <laughs> to make more space underneath which i don't mind actually because uh, it would kind of suck to have it coming all the way out to there so this is actually going to make this a lot nicer for me and i can tell they were used separately for a bit because there's more wear in some places where there really shouldn't be so uh yeah they kind of uh, expanded upon this desk over time now this thing as i've mentioned it's perfect it's exactly what i wanted it is cd-rom era so it has integrated organizers for those which is great um that's the kind of thing i was looking for this also officially denotes it as being for home use because you would not have cds in an office this kind of got knocked loose i have no idea how you move that in or out i didn't it's it's surrounded by four walls I don't, it was in the middle when i picked this thing up i i don't know how i'm gonna get it back to the middle so yay um i'm gonna be putting midi stuff right there so that'll be cool um but yeah there's a whole lot that i can do with this now that i've got it um i don't i didn't want an open space i wanted another one of this kind of thing right here too i really wanted this to go all the way around and wrap right into the bookshelves and just have this one contiguous like horrible cheap oak look uh but this is going to work out well enough uh, like i said i'm probably going to put that other bookshelf on here for now it's going to look like it drowned because it has so little color to it compared to this uh this is a much nicer looking wood which is almost not what i was looking for i kind of wanted that cheap look but this is still pretty good um but again it's been modified um there's a slot cut here for presumably running cables or something um but what that really means is that i have a carte blanche to do whatever i want to it so if i want to screw a network switch to the underside of there go right ahead it's already been ruined <laughs> so there's nothing that is going to be sacred about this thing i can just use it how i want so oh that's excellent um it's gonna need to be cleaned in a couple of places uh there's some grime right here uh and it's a little dusty because they told me they hadn't really been using it for years so that kind of makes sense but yeah i'm really excited about this um i was going to try and get all of the computers into and on here today i don't think that's going to happen so what i think i'm going to do is uh today is now the day after the fourth of july which is a tuesday i stream on wednesdays so i think i'm going to do a stream where i set up all the systems because it's going to be normally that's just something i'm going to fast forward through anyway so i might as well do a stream while i get some work done here so yeah i'm going to call that for today um but yeah this is going to be really good so we'll check back in once there's actually computers here and you know what would have been smart i meant to do this i should have plugged cables in before i put the the thing in the way huh uh I think I can reasonably get to that. Oops. <laughs> oh well. Uh, but yeah, that's that's gonna work out really nice. I really, I'm very happy. I finally got one of these. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited. All right, there we have two capture stations set up at the desk, and we'll take a look at the capture in a moment. But I just got these two systems set up on stream, and uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to call it there. Um, I ran out of 
cables for my KVM right there. I thought I had them in the box right here where I had all the rest of the stuff from my previous computer setup, but I don't know where they've gone, so I'm gonna have to find those or order some more replacements. But for the time being, I have two computer stations set up. So this one in the open area, I think I've decided is going to be kind of ad hoc and allow me to have the ability to set up different computers over here. So this is going to be tied into my main KVM setup. Instead, I'll just be able to set up a computer like this or the Sony Slim Top or something else that's not going to be there all the time. And that'll make it easy because it's nice and open and it'll be really simple to swap parts out. Then over here will be the main KVM setup with all the vintage systems that I put together and uh, really use regularly. And uh, that'll be where the majority of this space or the time is spent at this desk. Eventually I'm gonna have MIDI stuff up here, but I forgot to bring a hole saw to cut holes in the back of that wood. And that's not just like chipboard with a piece of cardboard printed on it. No, that's like actual wood. Um, so <laughs> it's gonna take a little more work, but uh, this works and this works and both of these are wired in for capture. So uh, here we can see my Windows 98 PC running. Uh, that is the new Windows 98 PC and it's mirror the new Windows XP computer running. Now, both of these are dynamically running right now. They're actually running. So we're gonna go over to here and I have the VGA capture PC with the data path card in it and the Extron switcher and receiver uh, VGA adapter things right there all connected together. All right, now right here we can see we have VGA capture going of the Windows 98 computer and that is live from over there uh, happening in real time. So what I can do is I can change this over to the Windows XP computer without going over there or doing any software changes. What I will do is I will come up to this. I will tell us the Xtron I want to send input two to output one, which is the capture device. And then I will press enter. And now over here, we have the Windows XP system. So I'll see if I can get a shot wide enough to get both of those at once. And it looks like I can. So let me quickly run through that again. I'm gonna send input one, which is Windows 98 PC to output one and boom, bingo. So I can live switch VGA capture stuff. Well, all right, like I said, I'm at a little bit of an impasse. Uh, I don't know where my KVM cables went, so I can't add any more systems here. I did actually try the 46 hooked up to this as well, and that worked too. Um, I just had to swap the cables back and forth. I don't know where they went. I really thought I put them all in the box with the KVM itself, but apparently not. So I'll have to find that later. And uh, I do need to bring in the hole saw so I can do stuff like put the Roland SC55 right there, which is just gonna be fantastic to have those kinds of things set up and actually the whole audio stack I had from the uh, 46 PC build video uh, is going to be able to fit up in there so all of the audio is going to go neatly off into there so it's going to be really cool to experience but yeah I am super happy with this desk setup um, having like this space over here and this space over here and then I haven't even touched the middle um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with the middle yet um, I really wanted it for a giant CRT but all of my giant CRTs are dead right now. Um, they keep failing on me. Every time I pick one up, it seems like it fails a little bit later. It's kind of frustrating, but um, they are all ancient and really complicated for the big ones. The older CRTs are a lot simpler. Uh, the modern ones, well, modern, like late 90s to uh, 2000 CRTs are super complicated inside. So those ones are gonna take a lot more effort to fix. So some point I'm gonna have to do that because I can't just keep buying old ones that are broken. I'm gonna have to like fully recap one and I think there's like dozens or hundreds of caps in them. They're kind of insane. So yeah, but uh, at the very least, uh, having this much space, I put an IBM PS2 in there to take a picture and it fits so well that uh, leaving it open for putting desktop systems in there like that is kind of appealing because it's really hard to do that on desks that are so shallow. So. Having that big space in there is kind of going to be nice for that. At the very least, I may have a 21 inch CRT or something like that eventually uh, that I can swap out for desktop systems when I need to record a video about that. But for right now, I'm extremely happy with this desk and setup. I have my long-term KVM setup area once I get more cables. And then I have the semi ad hoc area where I can put the computers on top when they're more visually interesting. And I think this is going to work out really well. Well. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, really long production process video. This one uh, took a lot longer to make. Uh, at least it feels like it. There was a lot more time behind the camera, and this is probably the biggest video I've ever made as far as file sizes wise because I've been filming with two cameras for I don't even know how many hours um, total. So that's a that's a thing. But yeah, I'm really excited how this came together, and I'm excited to see how it comes together more as I have more time to put into it. But yeah, for right now, this is a fantastic start that I'm really happy with. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe to the channel because this monster is going to be sticking around for a while. And if you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon or get a shirt like this one that is um, apparently the bane of my existence with CRTs. But that is it for the moment, and I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.